Hello my friends! You already know why you've clicked on this video. So let's skip the unsexy, unsexy intro that nobody cares about and start directly with one of the most important settings you should know. The custom UI. I got asked many times how and why I have made the map and my button so much bigger. Well, to answer the why question first, I just like big buttons. Hey yo, what the fuck? <clears throat> now let's answer the how question. You go to the interface tab in the settings and click on customize. Now you can see my current custom UI. I will reset it quickly for you and show you what I have changed. Firstly, I put the map on maximum size, moved it a bit and put the transparency on about 60%. Since your eyes should be glued on the map throughout the whole match, this change will make it just much more easier for you to see what's going on on the map. Next, I would recommend to maximize the active skill button as well. Since you need to react quickly when hitting Wind of Nature for example, a large button helps you to not miss it. The same goes for the spell and heal button. And the recall button if you need to spam it non-stop. You can also move the kill info to the side here and make it smaller. I did that once, but always forgot to change it back on my other accounts. The rest I personally wouldn't touch. But if you want to make your skill buttons bigger, go for it. There's basically no custom UI that is wrong. Unless you do some weird shit like making your mini map as small as your peepee. The second setting that is super important to know is the music. I know what you're thinking. Why do I need to know the music setting? Well, it's pretty simple. As much as I get a nostalgica flash whenever I hear the old Mobile Legends theme, <laughs> Did you get it? Nostalgica Flash, because the name of the song is literally Nostalgica. <laughs> You're so funny, Nico. Not. The music in the game hinders you from hearing what is going on on the battlefield. For those who don't know this, even when you can see your enemies, you can hear them. So when you scroll around the map like this, you can actually hear their attacks and the scream of the poor jungle creeps that are getting murdered. So, if you play with Tigreal like me here, I move my camera to the two buffs to find out which of them the jungler is taking first. And then I casually walk there to ruin the day of that poor bloke. When your music is on though, it becomes much harder to hear what's going on. I think this was the first step I ever got from a YouTuber. I can't remember if it was Dave or Beto. And this really improved my gameplay. As a 1-1 main, I always knew now when an evil Koofer was camping in the bush and wanted to slap his big balls into my face. Wait, that sounded weird, because now I could hear him charging his first skill. Just listen once with music. My darts bite! And now once without music. My aim is impeccable! You see the difference? Or hear the difference? So yeah, as awesome as the, no the nostalgica theme is, turn it off and enjoy your improved win rate. You know what else I enjoy? Getting more diamonds for the money that I have spent. And this is something you can get as well when you are re-downloading Mobile Legends right now with Aptoid. Why should you do this? Well, you will get a bonus of 15% right now when using my code MLG5 and on special days the bonus goes up to 30%. You don't have to create a new account or re-download any resources. Everything in the game stays the same. Well, except that you save a ton of money from now on. So, do it now! You're not only supporting your own wallet, but also me and my channel. The download link and the step-by-step -step guide is in the description box below. Thank you for helping me out. The next setting is super important for all heroes who needs to target their attacks and especially when you want to ambush an enemy. The hero lock mode. How many times did you die already because your tank laner decided to shoot everything at the fucking tank of the enemy instead of the super squishy enemy marksman? There are a couple of settings which can prevent this to happen. One of them is the hero lock mode. Once you have activated it, this little bubbles will appear with the enemy's heroes in it. Then you simply click off one of them and this target is locked. Let's Where is Zilong? Hello? Zilong? You're there mate? Where the fuck are you man? All right. Let me get this people. Oh wait, there you are. Are you alright mate? Come with me to the mid lane please. I'm trying to explain something alright. <clears throat> Alrighty. Now after you have locked in a hero and use any basic attack or skill, this locked enemy is your target. This feature is especially useful when you're ambushing an enemy and want to make sure to target the exact enemy. When you use 1-1 for example, you should always lock an enemy if you can. 
so it becomes much easier for you to activate your ultimate. This feature is not useful in a quick gank though, simply because you don't have the time to switch in between targets in a fast paced gank. There's another thing you need to know about this feature though. When you have locked in a hero, but this hero is out of your basic attack range and you press the basic attack button just once, your hero will just walk to that hero and attack it. If you use your basic attack there while you're moving and there's another hero in your range, the lock will disappear and you will attack the target that is in your range. This happens when you have turned off the attack assist feature and I'm pretty sure that this is a bug. When you have turned on this feature, your hero does the usual freak out movements and the lock stays. I don't see a reason though why the lock should disappear when you have turned off the attack assist feature. So yeah Moonton, please fix this or hire me as your new QA lead. I have over 8 years experience in this job after all. If you have ever wondered what my actual job is, I'm the guy that ruins the day of the developers. <laughs> now since we talked already about the attack assist feature, what an awesome transition. Let's talk about it next. Turn off the attack assist feature. This one is especially useful for heroes who move while they are attacking, like Irithyll or 1-1 One -One for example. Before when you were running around with Irithyll and spammed your basic attack while the enemy was near but still out of your range your tiger started to dance. With this quite new feature though, you can keep running no matter what. This is especially useful when you use your secret technique of running away. While you run away, you can still spam your basic attack. When the enemies are out of your range, nothing happens and you can just keep running. And if they are in your range, you can still run but also attack them. So in my opinion, this is a very useful feature. Well, it's useful when you've turned it off. So I guess it's not useful. Uh, anyway, the next setting I want to talk about is the most useless one. And I can only highly recommend to you to never turn it on. Never use the auto upgrade or auto buy feature. In Mobile Legends, you should never have your one build only no matter what. If you really want to become better, you need to know which item you have to get in which situation. To give you all a little reward for watching until now, I'm giving you a small spoiler. There will be a couple of videos about the items in the next weeks. Now for this video, let me just give you a few examples. When you play as a marksman and the enemy has a saber for example, you have to know what item you have to get to counter him. Do you already know which item that could be? Yes, it's Wind of Nature. Because with its active skill, you can become immune to all physical attacks for 2 seconds, so you actually can survive the ambushes from this annoying tin can. Next example, when you play against a regen hero on the XP lane like Ruby or Uranus, I can see the one kid laughing at the back when I'm saying that. Yes, I'm talking about you. You should know that you can make your life just so much easier when you buy an anti-heal item like Dominance Eyes. And as tank for example, you can never have your standard build anyway. When there are no heroes with magic damage in the enemy team, you don't even need to think about getting Athena's shield. If the enemy has 3 magic damage heroes though, make sure to buy tough boots and Athena's shield or radiant armor first, so you can actually survive their attacks. Later on you need to build counter items depending on which of your enemies is the best player. So yeah, if I'll ever caught you using this feature, I will delete Mobile Legends from your phone and install Candy Crush instead. Is Candy Crush even a thing nowadays or is this only a gamer boomer like me knows? Let's talk about the targeting priority next. It sadly isn't as easy as saying this and only this targeting priority is the best because it really depends on the hero you are playing. So let's go through all three of them. First we have the lowest HP percentage, which is the most useless one in my opinion. When you have two heroes standing next to each other, one is a squishy bot Layla and the other one is the almost unkillable damage bot, so basically the tank. Now when the unkillable damage bot has less percent HP than bot Layla, you will blast all of your attacks into the face of the unkillable bot. On the real battlefield this would mean that you blast all of your random BS towards the tank. And as we all should know at this point, you shouldn't blast all of your attacks into the tank's face if you could kill a squishy enemy with it who will kill you if you're not fast enough. I never use this priority with any hero, but in case you are using it, I would be really interested to know with which hero you use it and why. Next we have the lowest HP. This should be pretty much self-explaining. You attack the hero that has the lowest HP in your range. This I would highly recommend for most ranged heroes, especially for marksmen, since their speciality is to deal a huge amount of damage and therefore you want to target the enemies with the lowest HP to kill them quickly. There are a few exceptions, but more to that in a second. I would also recommend this priority for assassins, since when you attack an enemy, you want to target the one with the lowest HP, so you can actually get the kill you desire. 
The last priority is closest target. With this, you simply attack the target that is closest to you. This is the priority setting you should use for all melee heroes, since you have to find the blokes who are right in front of you. I would also recommend to use this targeting priority with Carry, Moskov and 1-1. In 1-1's case, for example, it is easier to activate your ult if you can be sure to attack the same target all the time, which is the closest one to you. There's another potential bug that I have noticed, though, when you use the closest target priority. So, when you use your basic attack, you attack the closest target. Yeah, I know, I'm so smart. None of you would have guessed that, right? So, it's obvious that all of your skills are also automatically targeted at the closest target. Right? Uh, I hate to break it to you, but... Nope. For some reason that only the degenerated developer who made this feature knows, your skills are targeted at the hero who have the lowest HP percentage. And this ruins basically any situation where you just try to auto-aim your skills at the closest target. So the conclusion to this is, don't use auto-aim when you use the closest target priority and when you have the time to aim your skills. Auto-aim is generally something you should only use when you need to use your skills quickly, for example when being ambushed. Now before we move on to the last two most important settings, we are going to make a quick fire about the other settings in the game that are important, but didn't make the list because it's quite obvious what to choose. Let's begin. The camera height should be always set to high. You need to see as much as possible on the battlefield. And if you have a potato phone, better turn on all other graphic settings and don't use the HD maps. You should turn on the creep HP setting to see how much HP the creep has left, so you can use your retribution at the perfect moment. Don't use the smart targeting settings, because they are really not that smart. Huh? You simply don't have the time in the gang to target all of your basic attacks, and to target your skills with the smart option, you have to be very precise, which is very difficult in a fast-paced game like Mobile Legends. The novel targeting just works much better in my opinion. You should use the camera shift though, because then you can aim your long-range skill better. If you want to use the assisted aiming mode, it's up to you. I tried both and didn't really notice a difference for me in the match. There are also two joystick position settings, but it seems that only one of them is actually working. I have no idea what this one does, so please tell me if you know. I don't like to have the joystick on the fixed position, so I turned it off. But if you like it more like this, it's totally fine. The HP shift setting you should turn on, because then the HP bar of the turrets, the turtle and the lord is shifting after you have attacked it, so you can see it better. The HP lock is unnecessary though, since you don't really need to see how much HP the enemy has after you have failed to kill them. The skill wheel is another thing that is up to you, and not important for many heroes, since it only affects placing skills like Nana's Molina or the throw skill of Jord for example. The lower the skill wheel is, the slower the circle is moving. For the cast cancelling setting, I would recommend the button option. With the swipe option it's just much more likely that you accidentally cancel the skill you wanted to cast. The camera movement setting is also something that you need to find out for yourself. I moved it slightly to the right, but everything that is comfortable for you to scroll around the map is fine. So now, we only have two settings left. The first one is the aiming method. You have three options. Free aim, advanced aim and lock on aim. To get the big elephant out of the way, you should use the advanced aim option only. Here's why. With free aim you're just missing the minion button. I thought first that you also don't have the turret attack button with this option. But in one patch the developers added this to the free aiming method. It is only active though while you're under the enemy's turret. But since you don't have the minion button, I don't see a reason why you should use free aim, when you can use advanced aim. There you can choose what you want to attack right now. So the only reason I could think of why you should use free aim is, when you have a super tiny phone and really fat fingers. So yeah, in this case you can use free aim, otherwise use advanced aim. Now what about lock on aim? This is the most useless aiming method because you don't have a turret button with it. This means you could accidentally attack an enemy hero under the enemy's turret. And this means the turret gets angry at you. And you really don't want the turret to get angry at you. That's worse than your mom throwing her shoes at you for being a disgrace to the family. <laughs> So already because of this fact I wouldn't recommend this option. But the biggest issue of this option is that you simply don't have the time to click on the lock on button multiple times to select the one hero that you want to target. Um, I think I've been too long in the training mode. Some of the bot laylers think they are damage bots now. Well, let's quickly test this. Boom! Now to the last setting. 
which are actual multiple settings. The settings in the background like the matchmaking and the AFK rules that Moontown really need to fix as soon as possible. Go and watch my video now how to fix the 10 biggest issues of the game and support us by helping to blow this video up. See you over there!